tonic sections. This is about the ellipse. We're going to take uh, the general equations and we're going to look at the ellipse. We're going to talk about the parts of an ellipse. We're going to talk about how to find an equation of an ellipse if I've been given something in, uh, in a form that looks like this. All right. The ellipse comes in basically two general equations. Depends on if my uh, my major axis is a vertical axis or if it's a horizontal axis. And you can see those two parts or those two equations right here. Now the easy way to remember, the major axis is always the longer axis. It's always the bigger part. If the a squared value is under the x term, that means that my horizontal axis, my my major axis is going to run like the x-axis in a horizontal fashion. If my a squared is under the y squared part, that means that my major axis is going to run just like the y value or the y axis, and it's going to be vertical. It's going to go up and down. The other, of course, is the minor axis, which is the smaller of the two. <clears throat> One thing I want to bring to your attention at this point is we're going to be looking at several different types of of conic sections, the circle, the ellipse, the parabola, and the hyperbola. We've talked about the circle and the parabola at this point. We're going to be introducing the ellipse now and then the hyperbola is next. One thing that you're going to need to be able to do is to, is to be able to look at an equation. For example, if I look at this, this form, I need to be able to identify, is that an ellipse? Is it a hyperbola? Is it a circle? What is it? Well, let's talk about what's, let's kind of use process of elimination automatically I can eliminate a parabola. One way that we know we have a parabola is that we have only one squared variable. Well, in this case I have x squared and I have y squared, therefore obviously it's not a parabola. Let's go ahead and eliminate the circle. Because you have 4 and 25, that means that it's not going to be a circle. In order for it to be a circle, the coefficients of x squared and y squared must be exactly the same number, including the sign. So in this case, it's not a parabola, or not a circle. If they're different, like we have here, and they're both positive, then we have an ellipse. If they're different, and one sign is different, in other words, one is positive, one is negative, then you have a hyperbola. That is all you need to know in order to distinguish between what you're going to be drawing or the equation you're going to be writing because if if I'm not sure what I'm going to end up with it might be helpful to note well do I have a major and minor axis or do I have uh, the conjugate axis and the transverse axis which one is it going to be when I go to graph it okay so that would be a really quick tip plus it takes no time at all to distinguish between the two <laughs> let's kind of go through this We've talked about these using the circle and the parabola. I take this value, I take this equation, and I want to recreate it or rewrite it so that I can use completing the square. Well, you've got this particular section here. I've grouped them in terms of x's and y's and constant terms, just like the general form. Where up top you have x's, you have y's, and you have the constant value. Step two is to be is to go through the completing the square process. Now. I put two steps here because sometimes, um, depending on which one you're going to be using, you're going to have to either factor out a number in one or both situations. In this case, we have to do it for both. I'm going to remove the coefficients for x, x squared and y squared. I'm not really necessarily removing them. I'm simply factoring them out so that I can complete the square. One of the requirements for completing the square is that I have to have a, a coefficient but before x squared and y squared, that has to be positive 1. So in this case, I factor out my 4, and I factor out my 25. When I divide this middle part, negative 8 divided by 4, it gives me negative 2. When I divide my, my 150 by 25, I get 6. And so that's what gives me these values here and here. What I'm going to need to do next is I need to figure out which parts am I going to add to both sides. Now this is tricky. You've got to remember b squared over 2, or b over 2 squared, excuse me, and I need to make sure to multiply the number outside the, the, the parentheses, my 4 and my 25, before I add to the other side. Note here, I went ahead and found it. It's going to be half of negative 2 is negative 1, so negative 1 squared gives me the 1 here. I also went ahead and added that negative 1 in the bottom. Here, 
half of 6 is 3, 3 squared is 9. I went ahead and put the neg or the positive 3 at the bottom. But before I went ahead and added the other side, notice I didn't add 1 or a 9 to this side. I added 4 and 225. Well, you take 1, you multiply times the 4, that gives me the 4 here. You take the 25 and the 9, I multiply those to get the 225. I'm adding for both, so I add on both sides. Remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do the exact same thing to the other side. Simplify all of that, and you get 100 on this side. The very, third, the very last step is to take the constant value. Remember, when you're looking at a, an ellipse or a hyperbola, it's always equal to 1. So you're going to take this value, it's divided by whatever the number is. Divide by 100, note that you're going to simplify. One thing that's interesting, I won't tell you that it's always the case, but when I see these values here, when I simplify, notice the numbers up top swap. I won't confirm that for every single time, but it's a really good indication that you're on the right track. The very last thing is to look at this. Remember that when I find a and b, it's the square root of these two values, not the values themselves. So a is not 25, a is 5, b is 2. Okay. By looking at this part, because I have a larger value under my x term, that means my major axis is going to be horizontal, my minor axis is going to be vertical. In fact, I can tell you that my major axis is going to be 10 units long, my minor axis is 4 units long. Now, now I'm kind of pulling from the websites, to, uh, the, the, if you haven't downloaded the I guess the formula sheet, I've located, I've put that on my, my calendar site as well as on the tutorial website, so you can download in either place. Um, these are kind of where I'm getting my formulas from, so if you're looking at where did the vertices come from, where did the covertex come from, okay, and I'll kind of go through it a little bit. I take my center, now note that the major axis contains the vertices and the foci. So the major axis, it has to do with my A. So if I take my center, note that every value on the horizontal line that goes through the center contains a y value of negative 3. So look at the center, the vertices, and the foci. They all contain negative 3 in the y value because they all lie on that horizontal line. Um, let see if I can get that on the same page. Mm, maybe not. Okay, so we'll hold on from the graph in just a second. The covertices, notice they're on the same vertical line as the center. So they have the same x value as the center. So now all, though all of those have a 1. I've taken the center, I went ahead and I said it's I'm going to be I'm going to be using my b to find out what the y value would would be. So you have negative 1 here and you have negative 5 because I took 3 minus 2 to get negative 5 and th negative 3 plus 2 to get negative 1. In order to find your each focus, I have to know what C is. For the parabola, no, I'm sorry, for the ellipse, my C is related to A and B by the difference of their squares. So it's A squared minus B squared equals C squared. I went ahead and put those in, so my C is equal to the square root of 21. And I included both exact values as well as approximate values for the foci. Remember, the focus or each focus is also in that same horizontal line, so you're going to keep the y value the same, and you're going to take the center, you're going to add the square root of 21, and subtract it to get the two different values. And to look at the graph, the very last part, you see those values here. <laughs> okay, you got your minor axis, which is vertical, your horizontal, or your major axis, which is horizontal here. These are the foci, you notice here, and then my Covertices are at top and bottom, the center located here. And the, a lot of times when you have something like the covertices, when they're really a decimal value or, or all, they're kind of awkward to try to graph exactly, if you write down the values out by the side, then I will never have to question exactly where you put it. Um, it's, better, it's a safer bet to put them in, write them out, and then get them close, and you won't have to worry about trying to get exact answers. And I don't have to rely on your your graphing technique or where you put it. Because I'm pretty sure, I mean, look at my photo side. They're not even in the same exact place. And so always a better bet is to find is to write down 
the coordinates somewhere so that the teacher can see your coordinates and there's no question as to what you were plotting them on. Review this, check over it, make sure that you can find the equation given a, a standard form. Make sure that if I were to say give you the vertices and maybe the foci, could you find the equation of an ellipse? If you, if you look at the standard form of an equation of an ellipse, the only thing I need is the center, A and B. Okay, so you want to think about how could you find A and B and my center from having, say, maybe A and C, or maybe, maybe having the major axis and the minor axis, or maybe I have the foci and the vertices, or maybe I have the vertices and the covertices. Okay, if I have those parts, generally I have an A or a B, or maybe I have an A and a C, and I have a way of finding that center. Review that. Make sure that you know how to do that before you come in to take that quiz. Thank <laughs> you.